getting ready to do this uh, shower that I did not prep. The homeowner prepped this. And he did an okay job. He even used the tape. <laughs> and the red guard. Which is okay. One of the reasons. When you put tape in here, you can never get a square corner. So you're, you're just squishing in a lot, lot more red guard just to fill that gap. Um, yeah, so that's one issue. Other one is that tape is a crack preventer. When you have sheetrock, you have tape on there, which is a crack preventer. If you did not have tape all over the place, you'd have cracks eventually. So tape is put in there as a crack preventer. Tape, crack preventer. Red guard is a crack preventer. Red guard is stretchy. A couple of coats of red guard gives a lot more than paper and gives a lot more than this mesh. It's not a bad thing to put up. I just think it's redundant. Just my thoughts. Um, he could have cut that out a mm, little bit more of a circle. Mm, we don't know the parameter because there's no mud guard left. Um, I might cut that out a little bit. But um, overall, not a bad job. Overall, um, I think this was the original fiberglass pan, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too hip on them. One of the reasons, years and years later, you have all this staining that happens. I don't know if it shows on camera, but the staining never goes away. You can bleach it out all day long, and you'll have this area over here pretty pristine. And where your feet are at, you stain. And then sometimes they crack. Very thin crack will cause a leak. So I'm not too hip on them. Uh, some people are. But um, it is what it is. So, like I said, it just made his prep a lot easier. Uh, he did the prefab niche, which is cool. They automatically have a little slope going on here, so you just set the tile straight to that. Um, and he did a pretty good job, not too bad. Taped up around the seams and all this stuff. Kind of boogered up the top, but mm, that doesn't matter too much. I'm going to be tiling up to there, putting in a strip up there. Whoops, forgot some sheetrock. Uh, so overall, it's not too bad. Um, what I'm going to do is a time lapse. I did one a little while back, and people seem to like that a lot. There's nothing I can show here as far as prep goes like I did on that other time lapse, but I'll just time lapse my tiling process because I think some people want to know how that's done. One of the, well, I know a lot of people want to know how that's done, which is why I'm here. He was comfortable doing all of his prep, but he wasn't comfortable doing his tile, and that's why specifically I'm going to do the time lapse. But I want to get into a couple of things first before I, before I start talking over and dubbing on this thing. This is 11 and 3 quarters. And because it's 11 three quarters, I did my math and went all the way up to the top here. And I think by the time you add in for grout lines, by the time I get to the top, I have about eight inches, eight and a half inches. And that's pretty good girth for that top tile. So I don't have to do anything as far as putting a ledger board. Normally, on a shower, I'll put a ledger board, which is basically just one by, and a very good piece of one by also. I don't buy the cheap stuff. Select pine. Um, Pre-drill some holes in it. Put the ledger board. Um, so say say that up there was two inches, right? And I still wanted something girthier. Then I would go ahead and have my ledger board. Maybe this first piece of tile would maybe be eight inches. That I would rip all these pieces at eight inches and know that I have eight inches. So my board would go eight inches. So the top of this board would be eight inches from the bottom. And then when I run all my tile up, then I could add that 8 to that 2 up there, and I would end up with a 2-inch piece and an 8-inch piece at the bottom. That's what the ledger board is for. But I don't need it here. And I don't need it here for two reasons. One, the math works out really well. Two, and more importantly, when they set this tub, I think my homeowner did it. I don't know who did it. But anyway, it's perfectly level all the way around. So that's another reason why. When you put a ledger board up, you want to make sure your board is level because your tile is going to follow it. But in this case, all three sides of this are level all the way around. So I can work literally right off of here. And when I get down to here, I'll end up with about a four and a half, five inch cut. That'll be one cut out in that direction. And there'll be one little tiny cut over in that direction, four or five inches, whatever that measurement is. So the math works out really, really well, and the leveling works out well. I will put a small gap 
probably about an eighth of an inch or so. Um, I'll use some shims and I'll put those on the bottom there because I don't want my tile touching exactly on the top of that lip, the edge of the of the pan rather, not the lip. Um, so that's it. If I have any commentary, oh, oh, one more thing. Because this is 23 and three quarters rather than rather than 24 inches exactly, I can end up, and again, this is very subjective. Whatever that distance is, because I think I'm doing this staggered, uh, whatever that distance is, it looks like it's probably about 10. So I can do a 10 and a 10 cut with one in the middle. And then when I get over here, this will be one piece going over there and one piece going over there and then 10 and 10 and stagger it all the way up. I can do it that way. I can scoop this all the way down. And then whatever the difference is, because I don't think it's another full tile. It might be, but I don't think it is. Uh, it doesn't, look, doesn't look like it. Um, then I just go back and forth like that, or lots of ways this can be done. I can cut one right in the middle and I can start with a half piece and then a full and then whatever it is on the cut. And then a half piece and then a full and whatever is on the cut go back and forth that way. Um, anytime, anytime I do a shower I discuss that with the homeowner first and I find out what their idea of what looks good, not mine. Um, and so remember that when you look at some of, mm, of not just my videos, but other people's videos. I, I never, ever, ever, um, how would I put it, dictate how things are going to run because I don't live here. You know, my customer decides all of this stuff and that, that matters a lot. And uh, yeah, so we'll do that measurement and then I'm going to move on doing this shower. So, all right, so I'm going to be some. I'm gonna be some. I'm gonna do some dubbing over this um, because I really haven't done anything as far as like tile goes, and this is not gonna show the whole process, but it's gonna give you an idea if you're contemplating doing your own tile. So basically, I'm just spreading thin set on. I have a six six inch blade here that I use uh, pretty consistently. You could theoretically use the flat side of your trowel. Uh, to do this as well as the back buttering, but that's just not my style. Um, I believe this is a half inch by half inch um, square notch trowel that I'm using. And I'm doing my lines vertically as opposed to horizontally. And with a large format tile, pr most likely I would have done the other direction on a floor. Uh, I just grow accustomed to doing it this way on a wall. And the only reason is because obviously the distance that it takes you to collapse those ridges as opposed to if they were the other way, if they were from top to bottom, it would be a shorter distance, 12 inches, than it would be 24. Um, but ultimately it doesn't matter as long as you set your tile right. Um, the direction of the ridges really doesn't matter. Um, back buttering the tile ensures as you put it on there and wiggle it around left to right, it ensures that those... Um, ridges that you've created with your trowel collapse when that happens you're going to get guaranteed about 70 80 maybe 90 percent coverage of your tile and that's what we're shooting for when we set tile um, it's not a guarantee but it's as much guarantee as you're ever going to have so back buttering tile absolutely positively uh, large format tile for sure for sure um, smaller tile say a three by six or something. Um, I still do it. I put a little back butter on my tile, but it's not as necessary as it would be on this large format tile. Anyway, moving forward with the process, you see I'm using leveling clips and my wedges, um, doing some back butter in there. So the back buttering, and I'm I'm going to try and hit on all the subjects uh, as I anticipate questions coming in. The back buttering is important for those reasons I just enumerated, but the back buttering also um, how would I put it, could take up the gap if you have, well you really shouldn't have, you should have a plumb and straight flat wall to begin with, but if you don't, say mm, for whatever reason you had a dip uh, midway or in a corner or something like that, then when you're doing your back buttering is a time um, that you would make it a little thicker on that area if you had to. So it's not necessarily created equal when you do the back buttering. Um, as I'm doing here, I'm adding a little bit more thin set to the back of the tile. 
as a rule, and I didn't do it there, but I'm going to talk about this. As a rule, I'm putting in those side wedges first. And the reason I do that is because it, with, with leveling clips, sometimes what happens if you don't put in the side ones first, put, say put on the bottom ones first, um, then they tend to shift ever so slightly. So especially on a smaller grout line, if you're trying to get that as perfect as possible, then I highly suggest that you do those side wedges into your clips prior to doing the bottom ones. And I'm posing that right here. <laughs> so don't make me out to be a liar. I'm just telling you. Um, and you'll see me do it later on as well. Um, working up uh, the different tiers. Oh, speaking of that, and I think I mentioned it in the first part of this video, I don't decide how this tile will be staggered. My customer does. So as a rule, large format tile should be staggered at one third, but hardly anybody wants to do it at one third unless it's on a floor, and then it seems like they don't really care if it's done on one third or not. Um, but on a wall, they always want it halfway staggered, and that's what I'm doing here. It's, that's called a running bond, and the running bond, um, it, you're almost con you, you almost have to do leveling clips with a running bond. The larger the tile, the more imperative those uh, leveling clips are going to be in order to not get lippage and that's the main reason for leveling clips. Um, so when I do uh, the layout and in this case obviously it's a running bond that's symmetrical. So I start out with uh, two full tile at the bottom then I end up with half and half to left and right and a full tile in the middle and then I'll continue that process along here with two full tile. In fact I think in this case I didn't even have quite a four foot uh, wall so I think I had to shave off two of those tile um, about an inch. It may have been about three quarters of an inch but either which way um, just to get it symmetrical is the reason that um, then I'm doing the shaving off. I don't want to set one tile then have it an inch off at either side because the eye is going to pick that up at the very end. And so again I'm just doing my bat buttering on this uh, particular tile. I'm going to slap it up there on probably the left side. I always work from the left for some reason. I don't know why. Um, even though I'm right handed. Oh, I lied again. There's on the right. And so um, again the leveling clips that I'm putting at the bottom here you saw one go in there that's just to stabilize the tile and make sure that uh, my clips to where they meet up um, are not going to move I don't want those to move at all in fact you'll see me use my margin trowel on the left or the right side to push those tile together if I find out there is a discrepancy um, so I'm, yeah I'm doing that right there left and right making sure that they match up good and then I'm setting those clips in the middle first. Now I can go ahead forward with those bottom clips and stabilize that whole row of tile. When I get to my left and right side wall, uh, as you see those 24 inch tile that I have currently um, will be opposing half of that. And it's nominal at actually. So when I say 12 by 24, I believe these are 11 and 3 quarter by 23 and 3 quarter. So basically I'm going to end up with 11 and 7 eighths cut uh, both on the left and the right side um, just to make it palatable. And when we get to that point on that right side of the wall, because I will show that eventually, um, you're going to see that there is a 4 inch cut. I believe it's either 4 or 5 inch cut on that right side wall. And the opposing left side wall will also have that cut to make it symmetrical. Um, I conferred with my customer prior to making sure that he... Mm, so as I said earlier at the beginning of the video, I always confer with my... I always make sure that they're okay, especially if I have sometimes referred to as a sliver cut. And I don't consider a 5-inch cut a sliver cut, but some people would find it unsightly. So there's certain ways you can mitigate that with the math and make sure that you don't have that. But as I said before, my opposing tile with the larger tile will be half a tile. Then I'll have a full tile or partly thereof. And then on the next row, inevitably, I'll have a 5-inch cut. And, and I'll talk about more of that when we get to that point. But I'm just letting you know um, the way that you stagger this out. It, you've got to figure that out left and right side prior to starting this back wall because they all have to match up. 
So there is some pre-planning that goes ahead. But again, I always um, kind of defer to my customer, find out what their wishes are, because ultimately, you know, as I said before, they're living in the house, I'm not. So whatever their eye is pleasing with is different than what my eye is pleasing with. And why I also mentioned on the prior part of this video that um, for that reason, uh, sometimes you'll see a video of mine or somebody else's where the symmetry isn't right or you know you don't like the pattern or et cetera, et cetera. but ultimately I think most tilers are going to ask their customer how they feel about something I don't just willy-nilly slap it up there the way I want it although some people you know has, have been okay with that what you're seeing there I'm measuring from the ceiling down to that last row making sure it's level I'm measuring from the ceiling down to the last row that I just set to make sure that um, my measurement is the same left and right the ceiling uh, as opposed to the floor because especially with a shower pan proper that measurement will go away as you put your mortar in your bed liner etc 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 so that measurement will go away and so even though I work off of the ledger board I still want to make sure that my measurement um, from the ceiling because that's finite uh, left and right is the same and if it's not say on that right side that I just measured uh, was a quarter of an inch off from my left side then I would know that I need to bump up my left side a little bit more say it was a quarter inch higher on that right side than the left side then my next row of tile or two tiles might end up with an eighth of an inch more um, height as it were than that right side so I can kind of level it out I don't think that was the case here I think I got pretty lucky that that pan that uh, fiberglass pan was level all the way around but I'm just letting you know that that's a little secret to make sure so when you get to the ceiling you don't end up with a kind of a cockeyed cut on one side or the other um, I don't think I mentioned it but you may have already seen that I had a margin trowel when you put those clips in you screed off some of that thin set um, at the bottom and left and right side I might do it here um, because when you put those leveling clips in you don't want to gunk that up with a bunch of thin set and so that's why you would use a margin trowel. Well, I didn't do it there. Um, in fact, I didn't even put my clips in, but I can slide them in retroactively. So, yeah. Um, and I'm measuring again from the ceiling, making sure that that row is on point. So when I get to the top, I'm good. Doing little cutouts here sometimes are a little difficult. Um, sometimes you kind of play it by ear I don't know sometimes uh, there's not an easy way I prefer a wet saw you could do it with a um, I mean there's all kinds of ways you can do it with an angle grinder you can do it with um, different methods this is how I choose to do little cutouts just kind of run it back and forth against my tile saw um, once I've marked out for this little cutout I'm going to do it at the bottom of the tub or the shower pan area um, I just kind of run it across with that parameter in mind that I've already marked left to right and I just go back and forth with it. As you see there, the cutout's done already. Now I'm using a rubbing stone. Um, it's a very, very dense, hard material. It's kind of got little mm, bits of diamond in it or whatever and that rubbing stone makes a smooth edge. And that's what I'm doing there. Um, because I don't want to cut, if I cut too deep and cause um, an unnecessary cut too deep, then i got to start all over again. So I'm going back to measure right now to see if it's going to work. And obviously it doesn't, or else I wouldn't be <laughs> showing you this little, little clip. And so it doesn't measure right because the bottom end of it, I'm having difficulty with it. So I just flip it over there, and I just kind of shave off um, the bottom part because um, as I'm doing it on the blade of the wet saw it's only cutting off that top portion and not the bottom portion and so that's what I'm doing there I'm going back to remeasure it and it looks like it's good to go so I'm gonna fashion it in place and you see where I've done the cutout onto the right side there and eventually that will get some um, caulking in there to hide any discrepancy but it's as good as I'm gonna get it and so I'm just gonna leave it like that um, and then I, as you see, I'm putting little shims under it to get that little eighth of an inch rise out of it. 
and putting in my um, leveling clip shims. Get it nice and tight in there, and then I'm rechecking. Um, you'll see here in a minute where I'm rechecking the measurement on it. Screeding off the excess thin set on the top and off of the side there because I believe that's toward the end of my day so I'm only setting that bottom row where you see that not on the main wall but the bottom row on the left and right side of the shower um, so I'm just screening everything off and making it nice and cleaned off for uh, my tiling to begin the next day there you go and there's the cutout and then over here I'm just showing where it evens up to the next grout line to make sure when I come back in the next day everything is level flush and ready to go and if I wanted to go forward with leveling clips again I could go in with my Dremel and cut into that thin set and there I'm doing the measurement from the top of that ceiling at 68 there and over here it's 68 and the 8th 3 16th that's only because that top area of that ceiling isn't level. And that's basically it as I continue the process. Or maybe not. I just measure because where the bottom of my niche is, uh, there's a little cutout that I have to do. It wasn't much, I think it was a, maybe three quarters of an inch, uh, possibly, it was very, very thin. And I probably should have filmed it for the purposes of a DIYer, knowing how to get this cut good, but um, basically I'm doing a back cut. So even though I measure left to right on my niche, I took that measurement over to the back of the tile, and because I have a DeWalt saw, I can do a plunge cut, and I do my plunge cut upside down. My tile lays, lays on my table upside down and doing my plunge cut and there, therefore I can go beyond that line probably another half inch or so it won't transfer through to the front. Then I, can, then I can turn it back around again and do my left and right cut straight and that little piece will just drop right out. That way I get a really nice clean cut at that bottom of the niche. Um, there's a lot of little mm, tile tricks that um, maybe one day I'll do a video on specifically just cutting tile and how to do little tricks like that. Um, because sometimes people will ask me, well, how did you get that cut? You know, it would have taken me three or four tries to do it. Yeah, you don't want to waste tile. So getting down um, all the little tricks ahead of time is going to facilitate a much easier, faster job for you. Otherwise, you'll be pulling your hair out trying to you'll go through three or four tiles just trying to get one cut done. It's going to waste time and it's going to waste money on your tile. So knowing that to be true, um, ideally I wouldn't want to do that. If I had known, say, there was a three-quarter cut to be had at that bottom of the niche, then I probably, mm, I don't know if I would have or not, I might have went ahead and ripped my bottom tile at three-quarters of an inch, the whole bottom, so that when I got up to that point, it matched up perfectly. Um, so that's another way to go about it if you don't want to do that small little sliver cut thing. Um, so speaking of sliver cut, so now you see at the bottom right corner that little 5 inch piece that I was telling you about before. What are you looking at? Go back to work. Um, <laughs> that little 5 inch piece on that right side. Um, that could have been avoided. I could have taken off from that left side. That's 11 and 7 eighth piece I was telling you about before. I could have taken off that 5 inches from that piece, um, which would have avoided that 5 inch piece on the right side. But that would have looked funky and it wouldn't have been symmetrical. So, And then every tile after that would have had to been cut the same way, even the full tile, including that one I just set, would have had to been also shaved off by 5 inches. So it wouldn't have been symmetrically pleasing. Um, but again, you know, I asked my customer, are you okay with that? Uh, five inch cut on the end. It's going to replicate itself on the other side, so symmetrically speaking, it'll be the same. Um, so you saw where I just put in that um, that long piece right below the niche, and I don't know if you could tell, but yeah, it's probably three quarters. It might be an inch that I shaved off of there, but it works square left and right perfectly. Um, that's kind of the point. So I think right there, I'm getting that tile straight. 
um, on the end there and then also I come in there with a margin trail and take out any excess thin set. If you look at the top right of that uh, where I screeded out the thin set where I'm doing the measurement now there's a couple of inches left of thin set off of the end of that wall and that there's a reason for that because I know I'm putting Schluter in there later um, a profile uh, aluminum profile if you will other people other than Schluter make that but because I know I'm doing oh this is important too I'll get back to that so I'm measuring my tile to the wall on the top and now on the bottom and the reason I'm doing that is because sometimes your wall isn't the same so if from the niche to that right side on the top might be I don't know 18 inches and then the bottoms you know 17 and 3 quarters so that's another little trick you might want to think about making sure that your tile is cut straight to whatever you're dealing with and not necessarily um, to what just one measurement happens to be but getting back to that void that I have going on that's where the Schluter piece is going to go into later and I'm going to talk about that here in a few minutes when I get to that here I'm doing a hole cut with a diamond hole cutter I don't use the tape anymore because I go through too much of it so I found that if I just hold on to that um, that plastic piece which is basically your template um, if I just hold on to it then I'm good but you're going to pour some water inside there so you don't dull your blade and um, I probably shouldn't have done it on my table saw because then I hit the rubber <laughs> and then I got little hole markings there but see there see how that hole is nice well it's roughed up a little bit but it's nice and clean right around where the shower head goes and that's basically it um, not much of this video that I went over because there's not much on here that I can show it's just a redundancy of setting tile after tile after tile after tile um, I'll try and do a better video later oh I slowed this down for a reason I want to I want you to see that there's a void a definitive void in there probably about an inch or so deep where there's no thin set whatsoever in that last tile all the way down and that goes to the left side as well when that void um, gets filled in with thin set later on that's when I slide in my transition piece right into that void and that works best for me and that's basically it um, I'll try and do a better job on the next um, commentary type video that I do hey if you enjoyed that video and you learned something consider being a patreon member five ten fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos I make nothing up from YouTube at all if you're gonna call me for advice please Donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.